Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be playing with the Shape Abilities Destination China Dies Cloud and Lantern Etched Dies. These are really intricate, very pretty, very delicate type dies. They are beautiful and they cut beautifully. And throughout this video, I'm going to be making very similar layouts of cards. However, I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks along the way just to make your life a little bit easier with this or any intricate dies that you might have. So you can see me pulling out some of this tonic mirror cardstock, and I'm going to be using this blush color, the silver, and the gold, as well as some other glitter cardstock throughout. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the large stencil, the cloud stencil. And when I do this, you can see me do this and poke this. Do you see how slow I'm going? Well, it feels like this is how long it took me. Watch and wait for it. Poking every single little hole. <laughs> oh, obviously, I slowed that down for you just so you can feel it along with me. But through the power of film, I sped it up and we got everything punched out. I'm going to show you a couple tips here. First one, take out some dryer sheets. This will give a waxy coat to your die. Run it through your die cutting machine a couple times. That's one tip that will help it ease its way out. So although it's still sitting in there, because this is mirror cardstock and this does hold a little bit better into your dies, but it pops out so much easier than when I did it the first time without having it run through with that dryer sheet. So that's tip number one. And if you do this with other dies, and um, not mirror cardstock, you're gonna see the die pop right off. So just to let you know. Okay, so I'm gonna be moving into cutting out these lantern dies, which are just classy, can I just say. Beautiful, there's so much more that you can do with these dies than what I'm showing you in this one video. In fact, I will be pulling these out again for another video in the future. But um, they're just so pretty and so delicate. And here you can see with that tonic mirror cardstock, I'm just popping those innards right out. They are coming out so easily. So I get those popped out and I am using my pokey tool to pop them, pop the little pieces out of each of the dies on the inside. So you can see me doing that here. Now um, there is a tool that has just shown up on the right side of this frame that I will be showing you is a magic tool. And if you've never seen it before, I owned it. I bought it a long time ago and today when I was doing these videos was the reason I realized I had it. <laughs> okay, so I have flipped over my mirror card stock in the blush and I'm putting glue all over. So I do this once or twice, but then I realized in multiple cards, which I, I made multiples, you're going to need to do something a little quicker. So I'll show you that too. Here I am seeing how this is going to look. Now this is my one of my um, a holiday card that I made, which is very outside the norm for me, the color scheme the details, and so I thought that was a lot of fun. Right here we have some spray adhesive. I'm showing you once on camera, but I take them outside after this because it really is strong and you don't wanna be breathing that in. And so I take that outside, but I did wanna show you one time on film. Um, I'm gonna spray the back of this dye, this lantern, because this almost looks like a chandelier. They're called lanterns, which I suppose could be the same thing, but goodness, what a chandelier. Like I wanna. You watch when we cut it out of some glitter cardstock. It's just awesome. Right here is the final card for that. You can see I use some glitter cardstock on the background, and that will finish up that first card. Okay, so let's watch that tool, that magic tool in action. So I'm running this through my die cut. She's making an appearance today for you. She hardly ever does. And I'm doing this on some regular uh, watercolor cardstock. And so I'm pulling this off and getting it separated. Now I've had the positive out. Now this is all of the innards to this. Watch this right over it. It has a foam sheet right underneath as I roll this tool over and it just pops out everything. Boom, done. Oh my goodness, it's so easy. No more slow-mo poking, so much better. So here I'm showing you the backgrounds that I've been collecting over the last year. <laughs> I finally pulled those out and I'm going to make some soft, pretty, and pastel -y, uh cards here. So um, all of the stencil or not stencils, all of the dies 
I cut out with some just white cardstock, and I am going to be just laying over the backgrounds I've made. The backgrounds are made with Distress Oxides. In the past, over the course of the year, I pick up extra oxides with watercolor paper, and now I get to come back to it so that I could see them all put to good use. And here are some of those close up. So I sprayed the backs or the entire sheet of them with some Sukineko Sparkle Shimmer Spray, and that just gives that really soft touch to finish them off. Okay, so let's move into the final two cards that I make here. I am putting one of those watercolor cardstock pieces that I use the die on over another one, and I am going to be using it as a stencil, coloring both panels and getting two cards for one. You see that I am doing a rainbow array, of Distress Oxide colors, very bright end of the rainbow, as opposed to the pastel colors that I was using in the prior cards. This one is gonna be really bold, really bright. I just love it, it's fun. When you're doing this over the die cut, you wanna make sure that you twist your blending tool as opposed to wiping. Because if you're twisting, you're gonna be able to cover on top and twist the color in without moving the stencil pieces and getting your panel messed up. I did mess up a little bit in the beginning because I had to realize that along the way that you should be twisting on top of it and pressing instead of wiping. And so the little bit in the red did not come out as pretty. But I decided that I picked really bold colors here um, because I thought that this was just going to lend the best way possible. It really, they, the colors mix beautifully and I just love the way that it came out. So here I'm going to pull that off and you can see it's, you have basically two panels. Now I do something differently with the under panel uh, than I had originally intended. I was just gonna leave it the way it was, but I decided to do something else. First though, I'm gonna pull out another Spellbinders die, which is this beautiful rose. And I am going to cut that out with some purple glitter cardstock for the bottom piece, and then some white glitter cardstock from Lawn Fawn for the outline of the rose. And again, I didn't soften it up at all when I put these roses on there. I was skeptical at first, but I thought, you know, I'm just going big with this card and I'm just gonna bold it out. And so that is why I decided to stick with it. Here's the other time where I use the liquid glue and I'm putting some um, white Lawn Fawn cardstock, the glitter cardstock as well as my backing for that. And that's the same glitter cardstock that is the outline of the rose. And this way they all kind of just coordinate with each other. I chose liquid adhesive because I wanted it to make sure it stuck really well to the panel and I wasn't quite sure if the spray adhesive would do exactly the job. So when you are you know, um, adhering anything to glitter cards, like you wanna put something heavy on it. So just make sure that you do that. This way it'll seal it down. This rose I popped up and you can finish these cards off with any sentiment you desire. So that's the joy of these card panels. Here I decided to take, oh, I wanted to show you the tool in action again. I brought it back into the frame just so you could see the magic. <laughs> I love that thing. Okay, so I chose to actually outlay this silver um, one right over because I did find that I made a little bit too, too many little boo-boos there. I could have covered them up with some embellishments, but I just wanted to add some sparkle. And so there we go. I am lining that up perfectly and then I'm trimming down all the white pieces around it just to finish off this and I love the way this silver glitter came out with the die now I should warn you if you're gonna do this with glitter cardstock it's gotta be good glitter cardstock glitter cardstock that cuts and I could highly recommend to you Concord and Ninth glitter cardstock is the absolute best I've seen for intricate die cutting um, bar none I've found some comparable ones, but that one is by far the best for me. That's my opinion. And I haven't tried everyone out there, so I hear there's a few other good brands. But um, anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. Check out these uh, dies below. I'll link everything so you can go check them out yourself. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss anything from me. And find me on other forums so we can communicate elsewhere. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.